good evening okay, welcome my dear friends so regarding of certificate 2023 free online coaching for botany and also all competitive exams permanent botany faculty going to deliver their lecture and share their views experience and knowledge among our young aspirants so this is the best platform for utilize this wonderful opportunity my dear friend in this regard today is our eminent resource person dr padmaja madam garu assistant professor department of botany sara government college autonomous sangareddy madam please welcome and uh, share your screen start your session please thank you thank you sirpati sir so good evening students good evening ma'am good evening ma so weather due to weather conditions madam good evening madam good evening prakash navya and uh, mr good evening uh, myself uh, dr padmaja assistant professor of botany tara degree college sangareddy today i am going to deal a topic related to water relations and ascent of sap uh, under the bits we can uh, expect the questions so today is a uh, water relations and ascent of sap is it audible students is it audible yes ma'am okay thank you so today uh, we are going to uh, learn some uh, topics like uh, imbibition diffusion osmosis and how they are related in the plants uh, life for the absorption of the water so here the first one is the imbibition the imbibition we are always seeing this in our daily life also this type of a process if we take some water now if we take some seeds for example if the uh, we for uh, everyone uh, during their uh, fasting or uh, 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 if you want to germinate the seeds what they will do they soak some seeds in water overnight and in the morning uh, they will uh, take that uh, seeds from that water and kept in that uh, a cloth to get the seedling so what the process that is taken is that means the seeds are absorbing the water and they are becoming very soft so what is the process that is there in that is the imbibition so absorption of water by a solid substance the solid substance here is the seeds and for its swelling swelling means they will increase in size and is the process is called as imbibition so the substance absorbing water is called as imbibement which are absorbing that water is called as imbibement and the process is called as imbibition as the imbibition they increases in size so the swelling of dry seeds soaked in water is an example of imbibition that is in our daily life and we also see in a, in a rainy season the if you if you fix that uh, windows or doors also it will be somewhat difficult that means the water is absorbed by the wood due to that rain water the wood is absorbed and they increase in size so the swelling of wood doors during rainy season is an example of imbibition these are the physical process uh, seen in a daily life so imbibent do not dissolve in water they don't dissolve in water just like the salt and the sugar but they absorbs the water 
and the mainly are proteins have high imbibing capacity and starch has less and cellulose as least. So imbibing capacity is more in the proteins when compared to starch and the cellulose. And uh, during imbibition, water is absorbed on the surface of the imbibing. That means the surface is absorbing the water. The surface of the seed, that is but the seed coat is absorbing the water. And here we'll see here uh, experimentally, uh, we see that in one bottle, there is a, uh, a dried, uh, that uh, kismis, we'll say that uh, raisins. And in another, there is a water is there. So what happens if you see these two glass vessels? In one vessel, there is a dry resins are there. And another one, it is filled with water with resins. So what happens? That means these, water, these resins absorb water, they increases in size. That means they absorb the water. And the process is called imbibition. As the imbibition, the imbibers will be increases in size or swells. As a result, the volume will be increases and, and heat is also released. That means the respiration is also taking place in some of the seeds also. That means the germinating seeds, here the respiration process is also seen. So heat is also released. Imbibition pressure develops, so seed coats will be braced. Due to this imbibition, in some seeds, the seed coats will also be ruptured. For example, if you take a turmeric seeds, Water absorbed from the seed coat would rupture. So if that means it is producing some pressure also. And imbibition has the following significance. So how they are used in our daily life is the there is a germination of the seeds. How the germination of the seeds? The seeds will absorb the water as a result, the increases in size, and the seed coat will be ruptured and the seedlings will be coming outside from the seeds. And the seed coats, uh, even though the hard seed coat is there, due to imbibition, they are become very soft and they are helpful in the seedling. And even we also see that absorption of water by the root heads. We already all know that water is absorbed by plants with the help of roots. In the roots also, if you see the transfer section of a root, it consisting of epidermis, cortex, stem, xylem, and phloem. And the epidermis due rise to unicellular outgrowths are known as the root heads. These root heads will also absorb the water. And another one is the osmosis. Here, the movement of water from the solution of lower concentration to the solution of higher concentration to the semi-permeable membrane is known as osmosis. This process is also taking place during the absorption of the water in plants. So a solution contains solvent and the solute. You already know a solution is a mixture of solvent and the solute. If the more amount is there, that is called as the solvent. If the less quantity is there, that is called as the solute. For example, in this, if you take a glass of water, in a glass of water, the water is considered as a solvent. And uh, if we add a pinch of salt or the uh, sugar, the sugar is called as a solute. That means less quantity that is present in the solution is called as a solute. And the more quantity that is present in the solution is called as the solvent. So the, so the solution containing higher salt concentration if that uh, solution is contains the more amount of salt concentration that type of solution is called as the hypertonic hyper means more amount of the here the solutes are there so it is called hyper hypertonic solution and the solution contains salt concentration is very low so it is called as the hypotonic solution and when the solution is balanced, it is having the same, they are called, called as an isotonic solution. Just you have to remember that hypotonic, if the more salt content is there, that is called as hypertonic. And if it is less, it is called as a hypotonic. If it is the balance, it is called as an isotonic solution.
So the semi-permeable membrane allows only water molecules and not the solute molecules to pass through it. So what is the main uh, purpose of this uh, uh, semi-permeable membrane or the plasma membrane that is present in the plant cell is to, it will allows only water molecules. So plasma membrane is a semi-permeable membrane. So whenever the movement of molecules are taking place, through, from a lower concentration to higher concentration through semi-permeable membrane is called as the osmosis. This type of process we are seeing in the absorption of water in the plants. And here we see when a cell is placed in a water, when a, when a cell, that means if, if you extracted a cell from, we also, also do one experiment like plasmolysis. In this plasmolysis, we select the, we peel the Rio discolor leaves and we, we will place this uh, leaf cells or the peel of the leaf in a solution. So what we observe, if you are present in hypertonic solution, the plasmosis will be taking place. Like, like uh, time, we will see here, when a cell is placed in water, the water is hypotonic and the protoplas protoplasm is hypertonic. That means the water is not having, a, not having any uh, solute high concentration, but the protoplasm to, uh, is hypertonic in uh, content. So water moves into the protoplasm through the plasma membrane. So what happens here the proto from water from outside will enter into the cell through the plasma membrane. Why here the uh, uh, inside there is hypertonic in concentration and outside is hypotonic. So the water moving from the hypotonic to hypertonic as a result, when the water is moving, that is also called as endosmosis. That means inward movement of water is taking place. It is called as endosmosis. When the exit of the water molecule is called as exosmosis. So here, this hyper, uh, due to this hypertonic uh, content, the water will be moving into the protoplasm. This is called as endosmosis. So, due to entry of water, the protoplasm becomes turgid. So, what happens whenever the water is entering into these cells, the cells will become turgid. The, they will be the cells, the water, as the water is present, they will be, the selling of the cells will be taking place. So, the turgid protoplasm produces a pressure on the cell wall that is called as the turgor pressure. Whenever the water is entering into the cell, as a result, it will release some pressure that pressure is forced towards the cell wall and is called as the turgor pressure. So the wall, the cell wall pressure again is the turgor pressure due to wall pressure. So when a cell is placed in hypertonic solution, water comes out of the protoplasm. So high concentration low, one of our cell petamble, the water will be coming outside. So this process is called as exosmosis. We will do some experiments like in your zoology class also. If we place a uh, that amoeba in a concentration, high concentration uh, uh, condition, the water from the amoeba will be entering into the outside. So like this, after some time, the amoeba will be dying. So the exosmosis results in the shrinking of the protoplasm. So if the more amount of water is moving from the cell, what happens? The protoplasm will be getting closure and the plasma membrane will be creating closure. So this is called as the plasmolysis. The lysis means the plasma, the, from the plasma, water is coming outside. So this is called as, as a result of exosmosis, the plasmolysis will be taking place. So when the solution is isotonic to protoplasm, so there is no movement of water. That means the balance is there. So the solution produces a pressure called osmotic pressure. It increases with increase in the concentration of the solute. So in this side, if you see the diagram, this red one is called as the plasma semi-permeable membrane it is the water molecules. And this semi-permeable membrane is also present in the plant cell also. And here, how this osmosis will be significant in a plant. So it is an important point you have to remember here. This opening and closing of stomata is also leads uh, is by the influence of the osmosis. 
that means due to this osmosis water will be entering into the guard cells and these guard cells become turgid and the they will be opening will be taking place and if the again the water from the guard cells will entering into the subsidiary cells and again the uh, guard cells will be flaccid as a result the closing of the stomata will be taking place and the germination of the seeds so if, uh, due to this uh, absorption of the water also and uh, through semi permeable membranes the water will be taken and as a result germination will also be seen and absorption of the water by the roots that root hairs will be uh, helping the water from outside to take into the uh, epidermis from their cortex and from their cortex to endodermis and the through the xylem and shape of the cells will also be uh, maintained here the cell to cell water movement will be taken so that each cell is connected by the plasma desmata so they will be the water movement is also will be taking place due to this osmosis so uh, expansion of the young leaves for example if you see that uh, um, in uh, the the leaf lamina will also will be increases and uh, resistance to drought and the cold stresses also that means in order to uh, have any stress is there the the closing and the stomata will also be maintained by this and uh, next one is the diffusion this diffusion will uh, will be seen in our daily life also the movement of particles or molecules from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration is called as the diffusion so it is a spontaneous a dispersion of solutes in the dispersion phase that means if you uh, uh, drop a ink in a glass of water or the ink particles this is totally diffuses in the water and if you if a small bottle filled with the perfume this will all we, everyone will see in their homes that if a spray bottle is opened or pressed the total room will be sprayed or any uh, perfumes also if we uh, press that one that molecules will be eventually distributed so this is called as the diffusion from the uh, region of higher concentration that means they are uh, uh, in a bottles they are pressed in a higher uh, concentration they are spreading in the atmosphere in the lower concentration it is totally spreading that is called as the diffusion similarly if some sugar is put in a glass of water it dissolves in it and uh, dissolves in it the total uh, glass will be will be of same taste the sugar will be of same taste uh, that is totally that sugar is uh, diffused in that water therefore water in the top of the cup also acquires sweet taste at the bottom and the top also so the diffusing particles have certain pressure called as the diffusion pressure so it is directly proportional to the number of or the concentration of diffusing particles so here we will see the example that uh, the potassium permanganate crystals the they are diffusing from higher concentration to lower concentration and totally the total glass will be acquiring the same color without having any shades so it is totally diffused in this so uh, therefore the diffusion takes place always from region of higher concentration pressure to region of lower concentration pressure is called as the diffusion and uh, here the factors controlling diffusion is is mainly will seen in the states like the uh, solids liquids and the gases the gases diffuse faster than the liquids or the solids because the molecules will the distance between the molecules will be more so can be diffuses easily but if you take the liquids the distance between the liquid molecules will be less uh, when compared to the solids but in a solids they are fixed in condition and they are very strong L like this uh, the, in uh, gases they can easily diffuse so increase in temperature increases the rate of diffusion also if the temperature will be increases the rate of diffusion will also be increases and denser particle diffuse slowly we already know that the when the size of the particles is uh, less they diffuse uh, uh, fastly and when compared to the size of the uh, particles with the uh, uh, denser size and uh, particle diffuses faster in less concentrated media 
and uh, diffusion occurs along the diffusion pressure gradient. That means diffusion always occurs from a region of higher diffusion pressure to a region of uh, lower diffusion pressure. That, uh, that, uh, that means in a spray bottle, the pressure will be more. If you press it in the atmosphere, low, chal takwa ga onta the kabati, ee bottle to polch kuna puto, ee viga abhi spread out the even ga. And uh, significance in the plant's life, how this diffusion will be helpful. For example, in atmosphere, more amount of carbon dioxide is present. And this how the carbon dioxide is entering into the leaves through the diffusion for photosynthesis. We are not giving any, but whatever the atmosphere is there in the, atmo in the atmosphere, the plants are taking uh, for photosynthesis through the diffusion process. So oxygen of the atmosphere diffuses into plant for respiration. And uh, solutes in the cell are dispersed to different parts of cell. The ions of salts are absorbed by simple process diffusion by the root hairs. That means any uh, nutrients, any nutrients that are also be absorbed by the uh, root hairs. And uh, during transpiration, water vapor from the intercellular space diffuse to outer atmosphere to the stomatal opening. And here, what happens during transpiration, the water will be evaporated from the stomata. So from uh, from from the stomata to stomata. So the water the water is coming to the stomata by the subsidiary cells from uh, where the the uh, from the mesophyll cells to subsidiary cells from the uh, guard cells. So like this, to uh, by the diffusion process only the transpiration will be taking place. So diffusion take part an important role in transport of nutrients in the plant also. That means it is showing a number of uh, uh, process in the plant. And here, osmotic uh, pressure. That means the pressure developed by solution when it is separated from its solvent by a semi-permeable membrane is called as osmotic pressure. So this osmotic pressure was determined by de Vries plasmolytic method or the cryoscopic method. So the properties of osmotic pressure, like the osmotic pressure is directly proportional to the concentration of dissolved solutes in the solution. That means if the solution is containing the more amount of the solutes, so automatically the osmotic pressure will be increases. And as the concentration of the solute increases, the osmotic pressure, the, uh, as the as the solutes increasing the concentration, the osmotic pressure of the solution is also increases, and it is always higher in solution than their pure solvents. So osmotic pressure does not develop the two solution or at a same concentration. That means if they are in same concentration, the osmotic pressure will not, so there won't be any movement of molecules. So there must be a differential in the osmotic pressure. Then only the movement of water molecules will be taking place. So osmotic pressure never increase when insoluble solutes are added to the solution. So the plasmolytic method is an experiment in this. In the plasmolytic method, a series of test tubes containing Increasing concentration of sugar solution is prepared and small slice of experimental plant tissue are inoculated in them. After one or two hours of incubation at room temperature, the plant tissues are taken out and examined under the microscope for plasmolysis. That means whenever this uh, 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 the cells are pla placed in a concentrated su sugar solution or salt solution, the water from the cells will be moving out. So,
solid. Okay. So uh, nowadays, uh, Prakash, is it uh, visible? Yes. Okay. Yes, madam. Okay. Then uh, this uh, this type uh, uh, this type of process we will see in our daily life also for uh, preservation of the pickles. So whatever the water will be there, we are putting more amount of the salts. As a result, cells will be plasmalized and there won't be any fungus formation. So the concentration of the sugar solution that has produced the shell shrinkage, it is then taken in a frizzle funnel whose mouth was tie, uh, tied with a foot bladder. So the stem of the funnel is fitted with the mercury manometer. The mouth of the funnel is kept dripped in water in a Beaker. After one hour, two hours rise in the level is observed from the manometer. So it will give the osmotic pressure in terms of the atmospheric pressure here. And here, osmotic pressure in plants. So magnitude of osmotic pressure varies from plant to plants, from organ to organ, from habit to habit. For example, if you take the land plants like the mesophytes, the osmotic the, the um, osmotic pressure varies from 5 to 30 atmosphere. In hydrophytes, it is ranges from 1 to 3 atmosphere. In plants of saline soil, uh, soil that the plants are growing in the um, salinity or mangroves, the osmotic pressure is reported to be very high, even up to 2 or 2 5 atmospheres. And uh, here, that uh, due to this process, we will mainly see in this uh, uh, absorption of water by the roots. So the uh, the roots uh, for their life process for the photosynthesis or whatever may be that uh, uh, food preparation that we have to take the water. So uptake uptake of water by plants is called as absorption of water. Plant absorbs water from the soil by the root hairs. We we'll, no doubt here, plant mainly absorbs the water by the unicellular structures like the root hairs that are present on the outer epidermis of the uh, root. The absorb, uh, we, we can also say that uh, that layer is called an epibloma. That means that, uh, that uh, producing the root hairs like structures. And uh, uh, the absorption of water by plants is of mainly of two types. One is active absorption, one is passive absorption. Mainly here, active absorption means if the in place of the taking energy and uh, absorption of water is taking place is called active absorption. With the absence of this uh, taking of energy, this is called as a passive absorption. So whatever the process may, may be from the root hairs, from the root hairs to epidermal cells, from there to cortex cells, from the cortex cells uh, to the, the endodermis, say, having the passive cells, and from there, the pericycle, and through the xylem, through the leaves. So that this is the pathway for the movement of water from outside into the leaves. So if you take that active absorption, intake of water by, uh, by the plants with the use of energy is called as the active absorption. So the active absorption is of two types. They are active osmotic absorption and active non-osmotic absorption. So active osmotic absorption, the water moves from hypotonic solution to hypotonic solution from outside to inside. The root head absorb water due to osmotic pressure. So the xylem vessels lift the water due to root pressure. Due to this root pressure, the water will be moving, entering from the outside to the uh, xylem cells. So the water passage through the following path. So the outer that is connected to the water uh, is that root haze and from root heads to cortical cells, from there to passage cells. These passage cells are present in the endodermis. They are not having the Casparian thickenings and from there to pericycle, there to xylem and to the leaves. And now, active non-osmotic absorption is that, that respiratory energy use, used. That means respiratory energy like the ATP is used. So the non-osmotic absorption, the water can move against the concentration gradient. It is correlated with the respiration. 
That means due to this respiration, some amount of energy currency is released really, really that is helpful for the absorption of the water. So water passes through simplast pathway and the transmembrane pathway. The water moves through the following route. Root hair cells, same, cortical, passage cells, pericycles, xylem and the leaves. And now is the passive absorption. So absorption of water by plants due to transpirational pull from the top of the plants without using energy is called as the passive absorption. Here they are not using any energy for the absorption of the water. So what is the force that is creating to absorb the water is the transpirational pull. So there are a number of the mechanism of passive absorption. So the force for absorption of water arises from the leaves of the plants and not from the roots. So here what they are saying is whatever the pressure is there that is created in the leaves, that pressure is helpful for the water to absorb uh, by the root hairs from outside. So that force arises due to transpiration. So the transpiration increases the concentration of cell saps in the leaves. And the increased concentration of cell sap increase the diffusion pressure defect. That means the cell, the water, the thirst of water is there. The DPD means the cells is in a thirst condition in order to have that water. As the result, the water from xylem vessels move to the mesophyll cells of the leaves. So this results in the DPD in the xylem vessels. That means whenever the water uh, content is less, as a result, the DPD will be created diffusion pressure defect. So it will take water from the adjacent cells. Like this, the movement of water is taking place. Uh, taking place, uh, and due to this transpiration, the water water from outside is absorbed by the root hairs. So as the water forms a continuous column from the leaves to the roots. So due to this pressure, the water will be in a continuous form. They won't be forming any bubbles. The continuity of this taking place, just like uh, if you uh, in a pipe, how the water is moving in a pipe in our daily life. And through this uh, xylem vessel. So the DPD is transmitted to the root. This creates a tension in the root cells. So and this uh, uh, root cells, the water across the root cortex xylem as the mass flow column, the continuity of the water will be taking place. So water moves in the following path. Uh, from soil, from, uh, from soil the, the water will be there in the form of a uh, solution content that may be of uh, capillary water. This water is absorbed by the root hairs and from the root hairs it absorbed to the epidermis, cortical cells, passage cells, pericycle, xylem, and the leaves. So water moves through apoplastic pathway. Apoplastic pathway means through intercellular pathway. That's, uh, in between the cells and the path is there. That is called intercellular pathway. Sim pathway means that between the cell, cell is connected by the plasma decimata. So by, by this, the water is taking place. That is called a sim pathway. So it is now largely believed that greatest amount of water is pulled up by the passive absorption by this uh, transpirational pull. And uh, here, this uh, by this uh, uh, by this this absorption of water again is the gravitation is called as the ascent of sap. In this ascent of sap, number of theories are put forwarded. In this. Uh, uh, mainly accept is the physical force theory. So before entering the physical force theory, the number of uh, theories like uh, vital, the uh, vital theory or root pressure theory or physical force theories. Now here the vital theory, here the vital theory, what they are saying that there are some living cells are there. That means the xylem, they are the living cells. They are helpful for the transport of water. So this mainly uh, support that this uh, with uh, the, the living cells are, are only helpful for the transport of water in the plants. So that life activities of living cells near the path of water movement are responsible for ascent of sap. That means this vital uh, theory mainly said that living cells are helpful for the transport of water. And now a relay pump theory. This was proposed by Goldwiski. He, he, he said that there is a pulsating uh, movement is there as the movement of water is moving in the xylem. This uh, pumping activity 
of the xylem parenchyma is uh, creating uh, some pulsation theory. So it was uh, um, uh, by an instrument they observed that uh, relay pump theory. And this uh, mechanism of relay pump theory is the sap of cortical cells has higher concentration of salts than that of soil solution. So the, this whatever the uh, sap is there in the cortical cells, there is higher concentration of salts, then they are compared to our cells. So the cortical cells are hypertonic in condition. So as this hypertonic in condition, so water from the soil easily diffuses into the cortical cell by the endosmosis. That means cortical cells are in higher concentration of salsa day. So they will be in hypertonic condition. This hypertonic condition makes the cell to absorb the water from outside. So the uh, so uh, hence uh, so, um, soil water diffuses into the cortical cells by endosmosis. And here the entry of the water will be taking place from the outside. This leads to increase in the volume of cortical cells. The cortical cells become turgid. The turgor pressure pumps a qu quantity of sap into the parenchyma cells. As a result of parenchyma cell increase in volume, now the parenchyma cells become turgid and the turgor pressure of parenchyma cells pumps its sap into the xylem. That means, so they, they, uh, they will be easily movement of the water from outside to uh, from the cortical cells to the xylem. So the sap moves up in the xylem, which is becoming uh, be because of the pumping force. And uh, pulsation theory. The pulsation theory was proposed by the Indian uh, plant uh, physiologist J.C. Bose is an important bit. And according to this theory, ascent of sap through xylem takes place uh, due to this. Um, um, uh, and next one is the root pressure theory. Root pressure theory is proposed by the press plate. And here, the pressure exerted by the turgid targets uh, cortical cells of roots on their uh, liquid forcing a quantity of into xylem vessels through them upward into the stem is called as the root pressure as the water is entering into this by this pressure. So the root pressure theory explained that water is pumping up the stem from the root by a root pressure and the mechanism of a root uh, pressure theory. Root pressure theory works on a principle of osmosis. So it involves the following steps. The, the sap of cortical cells has higher concentration salts than, than that of the soil solution. So the cortical cells are hypertonic and the water will be entering into this. And uh, now the, the cell wall of turgid cortical cell exerts a pressure called as the root pressure on the sap of the cortical cells. So the root pressure pours out a quantity of sap from the cortical cells to the xylem. That means the water from outside will enter in, into the cortical cell from the cortical cells to, to the xylem. This leads to the increase in the volume of cell sap. So as the volume of xylem cell increases in the, in the roots, the sap, say, the sap rises upward in the xylem of the stem and the leaves. So, like this, uh, uh, the movement of water will be taking place, but we, uh, the accepted theory is the physical force theory. This theory uh, is one of the most important theory is of, he uh, said that according to this physical force theory, the transpiration pull or the cohesion theory is helpful for the transport of water from outside uh, to the higher plants of plants, again, as the gravitational force. This was proposed by Dixon and Johnny. So, the transpirational pull or the cohesion theory is mainly proposed by the Dixon and Jolly. This theory is also called as transpirational pull theory and the cohesion tension theory. It will be come under physical force theory. And uh, the movement of water will be of, according to, here we have to remember that due to this adhesive force and the cohesive force, the continuity of the water will be taking place. So according to cohesion theory, the water molecule in the xylem tube is pulled up as a steel rope due to transpiration pull. Mutual attraction of water molecules and, attra and the attraction between water molecule and the, uh, and the wall of the xylem. 
and xylem tubes form a continuous tube extending between the root and the top of the plant. Like this, the continuity will be there. The xylem tubes are filled with water column in the form of steel rope due to cohesion and adhesion force. So the, uh, the, the attraction between the water molecule, water molecule, and the attraction between the water molecule and the xylem, the continuity of the water will be taking place like a rope. So uh, like, like this, the movement will be taking place. And last, uh, during transpiration, water present in the intercellular space of the leaves evaporate and it goes out. So this causes reduction in the amount of water in the mesophyll cells. So hence, osmotic pressure of these cells increases. This leads to increase in DPD. This creates a tension in the mesophyll cells and now the cells in a thirst condition to take the water from the adjacent cells. This causes the pulling of water from the adjacent cells and ultimately from the xylem tubes of the leaves. So this tension pulls up the water column of the xylem tubes as a steel rope. The tension is transmitted to the root cells. The water column moves upwards by a mass flow. So like this, the continuity of the water will be taking place. That means this, um, uh, this uh, diffusion, inhibition, and uh, um, osmosis is also a play a very important role in the absorption of the water in plants. Thank you, students. Okay, madam. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, madam. Okay. So Thank tomorrow you. also tomorrow also same time, madam. Okay, sir. Thank you, madam.